Okay, class, we're now going to discuss a concept called formal charge. Now, the formal charge is a concept that's a little bit confusing, but I think if we square some things away at the beginning, it'll make a lot more sense. You know how ions are charged. They have positives and negatives because they've gained or lost electrons. Well, a formal charge is not a real charge. It's just a, an artificial bookkeeping method, a way of keeping track of things like you do when you uh, do bookkeeping for finances. So this is a bookkeeping method. To allow us to determine where the electron density is, that is, for the electron's wave function, how much of it is in a particular area in a molecule's structure. So again, a formal charge is not a real charge. It does not indicate an actual charge. It just tells us where the electrons are in a molecular structure. If we end up having a positive formal charge, it indicates that we have an electron poor region in the molecule. That means it's a little bit electropositive. It's deficient of electron density. If we have a negative formal charge, that indicates it's an electron rich area. region of the molecule. So we are going to have to calculate formal charges for each atom in a Lewis structure. And this is the general equation for how you calculate the formal charge on an atom. Formal charge on an atom equals the neutral atom's number of valence electrons, its valence. So for example, if it were an oxygen it would be six. If it were carbon, it would be four. If it were hydrogen, it would be one. And you subtract, and it's this part that uh, in these brackets that is a little bit confusing. The way that I'm describing it here is the electrons it currently can claim. And I'm going to underline the word claim because we're going to imagine that if the atom had to leave that molecule, how many electrons could it take with it? So another way of thinking about this is to say the electrons an atom can currently claim, well, if it's not sharing the electrons, that is, if they're lone pairs, they're not being shared, then it can claim all of those, plus one-half of the ones that it is sharing. So this is also called sticks and dots. So let's take an example real quick. We'll go up here to a Lewis structure that we've already written. So let's take a look at this chlorine right here. This chlorine, notice, has a single bond to it. There are two electrons in that bond, and then one, two, three lone pairs, right? So if we were going to calculate the formal charge on a chlorine, it would be the neutral atom's valence, which would be 7 minus the electrons that chlorine can currently claim. How many can it currently claim? It can currently claim all of its unshared electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and half of the two that it's sharing. So one more for that one. So that's why we call this sticks and dots. Because for every stick we see, that's a pair of electrons, and it can claim one of that pair. So that's one. And every dot that we see is an unshared electron, and it can claim each of those. So one for the pair there, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the number that would go in this brackets for the electrons that can currently claim would be seven. So we're gonna take a look at the next page here and we're going to do a couple of these calculations. Now, calculating a formal charge becomes very helpful for us when we are trying to determine the relative stability of a species and to see where the species might be more electron rich and electron poor. One thing that we have to keep in mind here, this is an overall rule, the sum of all of the formal charges that is for each of the atoms has to equal the overall charge on the species. If it's a neutral species, then all of the formal charges will add up to equal zero. So here we go, we have an example. Draw the Lewis structure and assign formal charges in the hypobromite anion. Well, let's go. So we've got hypobromite. Uh, remember, hypobromite. Remember, it's an analog of hypochlorite, which is one oxygen less than the chlorite, which is one oxygen less than the chlorate. So there's our hypobromite. So we're going to draw our Lewis structure. The less electronegative is considered to be the central atom, so that's the bromine. So bromine has a valence of 7, Oxygen has a valence of 6, and there's add 1 because of the charge. So we get a total of 14 valence electrons. I've already to dist distributed 2, so I, have two uh, so I have 12 electrons left. And we're going to assign them. Which atom gets them first? Well, remember, the bromine is considered the central atom because it's less electronegative. So the oxygen is considered the terminal atom, and so it is satisfied first. So I have 12 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've satisfied the octet of the oxygen. I have 6 left. Now I'm going to put them on the central atom. So I have used them all up. So I have no more electrons. Do I need to shift any lone pairs to share them with the central atom? No, because the central atom has its octet satisfied. So the Lewis structure is complete. Well, almost. It's an ion. So I have to put brackets around it and show that it's charged. Now, there's the Lewis structure. Now I'm going to assign the formal charges. So for the formal charges, remember that it is the neutral atom's valence minus the electrons it can currently claim. So here we go. The formal charge of the bromine equals the neutral atoms, the neutral bromine's valence is 7 minus how many electrons can that bromine claim if it were to leave the oxygen? It could claim all of the unshared electrons, 2, 4, 6, and half of the two that's in that bond. So that's one more. So sticks and dots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 that it could claim, which is 0. So the formal charge of the bromine is 0. Now I could write it, I could leave it like this and note that the formal charge of the bromine is 0 off to the side, that's fine. But it's also helpful to show the formal charge near the bromine. And the way I like to do that is I'll just come up right close to the bromine 
and in parentheses, I'll put a little zero there. And that parenthesis tells me that this is not a real charge, it's just a formal charge on that atom. All right, we're gonna calculate the formal charge on the oxygen. And so it's this valence of six minus, how many can it claim? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we get a formal charge on the oxygen of a minus one. So I can come over here and close to either above or below, right next to the atom, I'll draw its formal charge. Now have I followed this rule here? The sum of all the formal charges must equal the overall charge in the species? Well, yes, a zero and a minus one add up to be the minus one actual charge on the species. So there we go. We've got the Lewis structure correctly drawn and the formal charges assigned. Remember, each atom gets a formal charge. I'll point out at this point, if you have a zero formal charge, that means you are neither electron rich nor electron poor. Another way of saying that is the electrons that you can currently claim are is equal to the electrons that you had in your valence shell when you were a neutral atom to begin with. And usually that implies a degree of stability. If we look at oxygen, we see that it has a formal charge of minus one. That means the oxygen is a little bit electron rich. It has a little bit more electron density around it now in the molecule than it did uh, when it was just a single atom. That may or may not be bad. In this case, we would expect oxygen to want energetically prefer a little bit more electron density because it's the more electronegative atom. And so having a negative one on a very electronegative atom as a formal charge is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, now that we've done that, I'll ask you to do the same exercise down here. Assign the formal charges for each atom in the cyanide ion. So remember cyanide. You're going to need to draw the Lewis structure. And then once you've done that, assign the formal charges for each of those atoms. I'll let you pause the video for now. And when you're done, continue the video and I'll work through it. Okay. Assuming you've worked through this, we're going to draw the Lewis structure for cyanide. I'm not going to go through all the steps. I'm assuming that you can do Lewis structures. But the Lewis structure for cyanide is going to look like that. If you have any questions about how to draw that Lewis structure, make sure you see me or a tutor. I'd be happy to help you out with that. But there's the Lewis structure for cyanide. Now we're going to assign the formal charges. First for the carbon, and then for the nitrogen. So the formal charge on the carbon is its valence of four minus, how many can it currently claim? One, two, three, four, five. So there's a minus one on that carbon. Okay, next for the nitrogen, it's valence of five minus, it can currently claim one, two, three, four, five. So its valence is zero, or its formal charge is zero. And there we go, we've, uh, we've assigned the formal charges for each of these species.